You all right? Hey, check this out. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Why don't we just wait here for a little while? See what happens. James? No. We all go a little mad sometimes. Fill your hand, you son of a bitch! Look what you did to him! I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Macho Movie Madness. Oh, yeah. I am Brandon. Alongside me always is Andrew. And today, I'm excited because we get the opportunity once again to talk about They Live. We are going to be discussing, reviewing why we love They Live. Yeah. John Carpenter's 1988 classic I, yeah. cult movie, I should say. It's time to review movies and chew bubblegum. Yeah. We're all out of bubblegum. A lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> um no this th we, we haven't really talked much about they live on this channel i don't think no at just, least not in a while it, it, there might be an episode where we talk carpenter and we might yeah i think i think we then. did but we never singled it out we probably talked enough about it then but yeah uh, and i know we did for your channel and or you did for your channel and i think we did during one of my live streams but this is one of those that i can put on at any point in time and just vibe yeah and in, in, the, in, in the weirdest way man i can just relax and i could vibe i can multitask i could just watch it i could sleep i could do i mean put it on and go to sleep with the music yeah. you know it's just nice and um this is this is one of those you know carpenter was a very big fan of of spaghetti westerns and you know this is basically a modern day western you got a drifter coming into town to yep. to fight the bad guys and so to speak uh but they, they happens to stumble upon just so happens they're aliens and just so happens that they're high class <laughs> societal uh aliens you know they're they're hidden amongst us uh and kind of running the damn show yeah you know which you know some people out there believe that that's kind of the case right now anyway <laughs> <laughs> the kind of aliens <laughs> aliens it's uh depending on who you are you know the lizard people might be <laughs> <laughs> might be taken over it could be i mean who knows there's all kinds of stuff out there but it really it is it's a it's definitely a political commentary uh you know and i think it was one of those things that he 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 did in response to reaganomics and disliking that, that whole thing in the late 80s yeah you know not a big fan of ray which a lot of people weren't a fan of reagan uh by the end of the 80s and, and especially if you're going to be in hollywood you're not going to be a friend of, uh, a friend of republicans yeah. so uh but it's in it and if in its own way it's kind of interesting it's it, it's kind of interesting not to get too political we'll get into the movie in just a second but it's kind of, kind of interesting to see the the like the the messaging in this movie is so 180 to what honestly what the left wing or Democrats would, would do today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, he, he I would say he's probably more left wing being in Hollywood, yeah. um, at least at the time. And it's so funny to see how far this has come in a way of, I mean, it's almost like, I don't know if he was attacking them too, you know, but you could basically, this is, this is kind of an us versus them thing. And it always, yeah. that's the way it is. Yeah. And it's 36 years later at this point. So, you know, things have changed like to a point. <laughs> well, well, it's become it's become 
hyper aggressive and involved in everyday life yeah unfortunately but it really hasn't changed i mean there's still whoever it is whether it's aliens or not whoever it is there's still a bunch of rich ass people they control and run everything, and we're just down here scraping by. Yeah. So, but anyway, to, to get out of the politics side of things, they live. Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the movie. What what are some of your? Uh, I guess just get, you want to talk about the story more. Or we pretty much covered it. He he finds these this uh, this kind of old shanty town. Yeah. While he's drifting and and he's working construction with Frank with Played Frank by Keith David. Yeah, and. Uh, he he he's a he's a very quiet individual who uh, notices things. He just kind of looks around and just kind of yeah. pays attention to the world around him, where people like Frank don't. Yeah, they just kind of live. Yeah, it just goes goes about his daily business, and uh, yeah, things slowly unveil. His eyes get opened up as to what's going on. It, uh, in the movie, it's sunglasses. The short story, uh, eight o'clock in the morning. I think he was hypnotized. So yeah, I, I liked that they actually had you know something physical. You know, right. Represent. I think right. that works a whole lot better. I think so. Story. I think so too. I think you're right because yeah, this is based off of that short story. Yeah, yeah. And then I think I think it went from a short story to a comic, and that's where Carpenter kind of got a hold of it. And originally, um, you know, Kurt Russell they thought was attached to this, but he had worked with Kurt Russell so much on so many classic movies um, that he he wanted a different lead in that vein. And uh, of course. Met Roddy Piper at WrestleMania three, and the rest is history. Yes, yeah, and that's one of the very one of one of the many things that I love about this movie is Roddy Piper. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you you look at all of his one liners in this movie, all of his dialogue that he came up with on the fly from yes. his wrestling promos. Yes, you look at the, his wrestling skills, and we'll get to the fight here in just a little bit. But you know what he brought to that. If you cast anybody else in this movie, it might not be as impactful. Uh, without Roddy Piper in the lead. No, I agree. I agree with you there. I, I don't think it would have worked the same. Which is crazy to say for a guy who had done one movie at that point. Yeah. He'd done Body Slam, which right. we might cover on Warehouse at some point. <laughs> body Slam. Yeah. It's, it's fun, at least. you know. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, for but sure. Not, nothing. It's nowhere near as serious as this one is. No. No, I agree. Um. So, we, we, there's not anybody... Uh, well, Peter Jason would be another notable cast member. Uh, you know, you've seen him in a lot of stuff. Buck Flower, who's in all kinds of John <laughs> Carpenter movies. Yes. You know, um, Escape from New York. Yeah. He's in Village of the Damned. Uh, you know, he's he's always a homeless drunk or some kind of derelict. And <laughs> here he, he gets in with the high society people yeah. after living in that shame. Yes, town. yes. Come on, fellas. They just... <laughs> Come on, fellas. You just don't get it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that that character. Why not be on the winning team? Here? <laughs> um, and, of course, you know, you got Meg Foster. Yes. The, the, the one of the, some of the prettiest eyes I've ever seen. Yes. Ever. And that's about it. Um, <laughs> so, 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 uh, so much deception. To her oh character man! In this one. Well, even in Leviathan, she was like kind of like yeah. that, and then Peter Weller gets to punch her in the face in that movie. Yeah, she's evil Lynn and Masters of the Universe. She's just typecast as a oh yeah, just oh, deceptive yeah. biatch. <laughs> yeah, very very unique looking though. Um, yeah, this is one of those man movies, man. It just it's kind of a slow burn at first. It really takes a little while to get going, but and, that, and I think that's why it's so chill, and I think that's why I can just sit there and kind of. Yeah, uh, vibe to it as the kids would say yeah. i could just like i said i can just relax and enjoy the music and i can enjoy it's something that that, that slow build doesn't bother me yeah. it doesn't it doesn't you know I, I know what i'm getting every time i put it on and i can just kind of chill out and it's just one of the, it's carpenter movies for me and I'm, I'm sure i've said this in the past a bunch of times but it just seems like i feel right at home with them yeah there's just something about between the music and the style and because his his movies when the music when there's no music there's it's this quiet and it's calming, and I and I've always just loved his his style. Yeah, and and, and the same goes for like Halloween three. I can put that on and just and just even with that. I mean, I get that stupid jingle, but <laughs> but everything else in between. I don't know. Like there's just something about his movies. Prince of Darkness has that. You could really just put some of his movies on and just kind of chill. Yeah. He's just, he's just, it's just so good. And speaking of some of those movies that you just mentioned. So in 86, he did Big Trouble in Little China, which mm -hmm. was a complete failure at the box office. And so he went independent and signed with the live films. Yeah. And he got $10 million to do two movies. Um, the first of which was Prince of Darkness. And uh, this one, 
he only had four million dollars to to make they live and i thought for the minuscule budget for the late 80s four million dollars he did so much in the the universe building in this movie oh yeah for Um, sure you look you look at when when nada piper's character finds the glasses and you know he's looking down the street you know he's lifting the glasses up and just the map paintings there yeah are are just brilliant yeah absolutely yeah yeah um, consume I, I love the world he created there the little shanty town that he's in when they have that raid when when the mil, the police come in everything's lit in by the flares yes I, I like the look of that um, <sighs> that was that was such a crazy scene too like when you think about like how how like th- this giant police force just the SWAT team basically came in with dozers and just raided this poor shanty town yeah. right next to this church hideout that there's, you know, there's that they're there because they're broadcasting this signal. They're bleeding into a regular TV and they're broadcasting this signal and they're breaking that without, you know, and that's why like their head was hurting yeah. when they were watching the TV because they're breaking that, that deceptive signal that everybody's got that they're using to, to uh, pull the wool sock over everybody's eyes, so to speak. So when that signal gets broken and there's, and they're kind of warning, they're warning them about they, them um you know their head starts to hurt they get a headache yeah so that's pretty because yeah. that signals pretty, pretty good effect it's pretty pretty neat um and then you just yeah it just makes you wonder why all of a sudden that this poor shanty town is just getting raided <laughs> yeah it's got to be because somebody some of those the, the the rich elite what were they calling them in this movie the human power elite or something like that um you know must have known there was some kind of resistance and wanted that you signed off on it to get stomped out yeah you know yeah um because you know right across the street it was where all that was going on yeah um but yeah i I like that um all the stuff where he's you know running around you know before he shoots up that bank and everything you know it's black and white with a little drone i i like all those scenes man um the world building it's just fantastic (laughs) and who are you little fella (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Come to spy on me. I uh, yeah, I don't think so. Um, what do you think about the uh, not nice the uh, relationship with him and Frank? Um, I I really enjoyed that dynamic between him and Frank, and it's so funny. Frank, it's really it. It's kind of I mean it's so realistic in in my opinion because you've got Frank who's literally just wanting to stay out of the eye of the public. He's wanting to stay out of the eye of whoever. I think. In my opinion, I think Frank knows something's going on. But something's he doesn't up, care. But he does not care because he doesn't want to mess with it. And I think that's that's a really that's comparable to what most people are like. Yeah. Really. And not just nowadays, I mean how, how they've always been, but I think for sure nowadays. People live in denial like in denial. They they just life is rough, life is hard, and it's easier just I mean, it's hard enough you just want to get by. And sometimes when things get a little bit out of, out of hand and and uh, when some th- when things get real and you start thinking about people out there actually, you know, maybe some of these conspiracies are real, you don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Like, this is too much for me, man. I just, I don't want any don't trouble. Don't work for me, brother. Yeah, this shit don't work for me, brother. I just want, you know, this is already bad enough. Just let me be. Just let me be. I don't want to be involved. And I think that's, and that's kind of what Frank was like. He's like, I don't want no part of this. I don't want any of this shit, man. Just let it go. And, you know, and of course, John being the hero yeah. and not having anything anyway, he's like, no, no, hold on a second. This is, this isn't bullshit. Let's, you know, yeah. so it kind of represents two different type of people in the world and especially in America and why this country became what it became. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think, I think it's really good play. And of course, when Frank was forced after that fight to confront that, when he really found, okay, this is actually real. Cause he, he probably didn't know for sure, but I think he suspected, right. You could tell. Cause he was like, no, I'm not putting on this shit. Yeah. So listen, you crazy mother. Yeah. Listen, you crazy mother. Um, but once he was forced to confront that, he's like, shit, now yeah. I'm in it. Yeah. And now I can't do that. So he, so he had to fight and, he, you know, and, and of course the dynamic of them after that ride or die afterwards was, was great too. Yeah. Um, I, I, while we're on it, we might as well talk about the fight. Let's to me, it. this is the greatest street fight in cinematic history. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, for sure. Also realistic. <laughs> if you could get punched in the face for six minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, 
but I, if you're these two dudes, I believe you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, you know, the, 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 there's fist fighting going on. There's punch and kicking going on. There's wrestling moves. Oh, suplexes. Yeah, suplexes and, They're fighting dirty, kneeing each other in the balls. Yes. At one point, doesn't Keith David swing a board at him, and then Piper breaks off a bottle? Yeah, and it busts and it. Like, <laughs> or something like that. And, he, and Well, and then one, he, he, he breaks, he breaks, I think, he breaks somebody breaks it and then he it busts wrong and he laughs yeah <laughs> and then he, and then he, he he goes to swing maybe the board or something hits the window of the car and he's like hey i'm sorry or yeah i think i got that wrong. i think it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah yeah just just I, I love that scene it's it's two friends fighting and it's like you know that they're they're fighting they're they're mad in the moment but at times they're breaking up and laughing yeah the yeah, fight. yeah that's what makes it great but neither too. one of them want to give like yeah. they're gonna you know they're gonna win and in the end, Piper ends up winning just barely. Yeah. And of course, then it's so funny when they walk off and they're walking down the hall in, in the hotel afterwards. And they're just, I mean, they're beat, tired and just beat up. And it's so funny. Just watch them hobble along and we <laughs> take a nap for like three days here. Life's a bitch and she's back in heat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I love, I love the scene in the supermarket. He's like this, this real ugly, uh, Real fucking ugly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she looks like her head fell off in the cheese dip back in 1957. Like a formaldehyde. You, you're face. okay. Her yeah. <laughs> real formal, formaldehyde face or some shit like that. And uh, real fucking ugly. And then, of course, he causes scene. The cops find him. He has to beat them up, kill them. Takes their shit. Walks into the bank and just stumbles into the bank and then kills more people, uh, more aliens. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Uh, the, the the scene preceding that though where the cops come after him if you listen to this with the commentary with Carpenter and Piper which I suggest everybody who might be watching this and loves this movie should do yeah uh, Piper looks uh, is talking to Carpenter he's like this guy he goes you remember him and he's like no I guess I forgot he goes I tell him beat your feet he didn't know what that meant and he starts running in place <laughs> <laughs> and to hear them laugh about it is great um do you have uh, obviously, there's tons of pros in this movie. Uh, any moments that you don't really care for? Any cons? Um, I, th- I think we're both going to talk about the same thing. Okay. Probably. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, anything else you want to mention before we get into that? Um, not really. I think it's I think it's really solid all the way through. Like you said, it's a slow burn. Yeah. Such a slow burn that when you get to that last act, it's just it feels really rushed. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh. You mentioned the three million, four million dollar budget. It only made thirteen point four at the box office, so. which it was number one the week it came out. It was, yeah, but then it really fell off quick. So I'd yeah. say something got a hold of that. I, I, I'd say someone got a hold po- of that. Po- politics at its finest, yeah. you know, which is the same shit that's happening today, yeah. just on a much higher, crazier level. Which I, I know also, Child's Play came out that second week. Oh, and so. that'd be rough too because that was a big, pretty big deal. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and talk about the con. My con is that abrupt kind of any ending, ending you know meg foster uh we talked about her being a little deceptive she turned out to be one of not really as one of them but a player for one of them yeah and um it kind of i can't say it comes out of nowhere in hindsight i guess in the first time you watch it, you're kind of like what the fuck but uh you know in hindsight you see it because she never really did play ball too much no. she showed up at that meeting and you're like, oh, okay, she's a good guy. But then you watch it that second or third time. You're like, well, is this obviously just, she's just keeping tabs on him. Because then the bad guy, you know, then the, the cops show up again and shoot everybody. Yeah. Kill the resistance, pretty much. Um, it just reminded me of another con, though. Um, in that scene, when the, when, when they give him the, the contacts, and Piper's always wore the, the sunglasses, you can tell that Roddy Piper's never put on a pair of contacts in his life. When oh. him and Keith David get those, it's go back and watch that scene. It's actually funny. He's it's not struggling. so much of a call. Yeah, he's he has no idea what he's doing. Yeah, he's struggling. <laughs> I, um yeah, my biggest con is is definitely that that Meg Foster turn or that, or just so much they they went through the studio and they and they shot up everybody and was trying to get to the to, to the roof to kill the signal and you know, they finally make it. They finally find Holly and which is Meg Foster's character, and then she, he, you know, he's overzealous once he finds her, so he runs up to the roof. She catches Frank and shoots him right in the head. You don't see him again. Yeah, I mean that's it. I mean she shoots Frank in the head while he wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, that's not a good way for him to go out. No, a terrible way for Frank to go out. And then, um, you know, he gets up there, he sees it, he tells Holly to stay clear. Then Holly pulls a gun on him, and that's when he realizes 
and he manages to to get the shot off on her uh and then uh they shoot which they helicopter guy shoots him and then he manages to get the shot off on on the signal killing the signal and you have that ending and of course the broadcast signal uh it kills it kills that that deception you know it where it kind of uh where it masks those aliens face yeah. to make them look like real people and then of course you got people sitting around the bar or <laughs> these dude uh screwing this woman in bed or whatever and she looks down and she looks down and he's like oh, what the hell huh? <laughs> um was that's kind of a way to end the movie uh so very abrupt funny but also very dark uh, yeah. and ending it's it's a very tar- carpenter-esque ending um where you have the 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 old the old cowboy coming in and, and yeah. dying at the end but he still kind of saved the day a little bit i feel like because with credits this is like little under an hour and 35 i feel like there's probably 10 minutes missing there yeah like it, it feels like a 10 or 15 minute kind of thing it yeah. just because everything it's like it's such a slow burn and when you finally get there it happens so fast yeah. and your and your good guys go out so quick and it's just like what yeah. Like you, you, I guess you expect cause it's Hollywood to go out in a blaze of glory a little bit more. And I guess you can say they did, but it was, yeah. and they got the job done. It just seemed, I think people who watch it kind of know what I'm talking about yeah. though. It just seems weird. It's, it's, it's definitely a carpenter ending when you look at some of his other endings, you know, like the thing and things like that, but yeah. it does feel r- more rushed than those. Yeah. Um, that, that's pretty much it. it I, the, uh, you know, there's the, the, the underground, I guess layer that they have like this underground society. Like I don't even know because it's such a weird thing. Cause they, they use the little teleporters. I've and they, got one that can see. And yeah. And they, and they go down and they, and they find this hole and they go down in this, the tunnels and that's where they meet the dude, the homeless guy who, who's flipped and he gives them the grand tour as he says. <laughs> and, um, in, in which, which leads into like this big ballroom where they're having, the their little get together and then and then it, then it goes further in and it comes up into the studio where they're at yeah which leads up into an actual like building that you'd expect and and then a, like a full full on like not yeah. skyscraper but a big building with a roof and an antenna on it yeah and then of course you got that little area at the beginning where they're all zapping back to their homes <laughs> so you've got outer space there and I, and that's like the only that's only well, one of the only times where i'm kind of like what the fuck in this movie <laughs> it makes Why sense is, though they that's home base to them i guess it know? is but it's underground but then you've got space and then you've got a studio <laughs> with a building and it's 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 yeah. la like what is going on here yeah so I, you know i'm not supposed to make sense of it i guess it just i'm like what the fuck is this just 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 obey just, just obey. Yeah, that's that's the move. Just Con, obey. just consume, get married, and obey. <laughs> Eat, sleep, make money. Yeah, have babies. That's about it. Anyway, so what would you uh, what would you rate this movie? You think on a f- scale out of five? Yeah, we can do out of five. I want. I like it so much. I want to go four, but I think I'm going to go three and three quarter out of five yeah three and three quarter um that's that's a pretty safe one it it's one of those movies where you it's got some faults and it's um it's not one of his strongest films uh, it's definitely a cult film um as a fan of carpenter and a fan of, of piper obviously i love it i i you 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 try to rate it on a i'm trying to rate it on a objective level yeah because i do love this movie like i said it, it's just a good good movie a uh, good fun movie but yeah, I'd say three and three quarter probably yeah. is a safe, just objective. Yeah, when your last act feels that rush. Yeah, that's the biggest bugaboo here. It's it really is. I it does. I don't hate it. It's just yeah, like you said, it feels like there's a little bit missing. Yeah. Um, but everything else is solid. The music, of course, is solid. Um, the slow burn is solid. Piper is extremely solid in this movie. For for as inexperienced as he was, and this hands down his his best and most notable yeah. movie, I think for sure. Yeah. Um, just all around, all around great. And uh, yeah, I think uh, what do we got coming up next? Gonna do another one. Um, we really haven't discussed. What do you want to do next? Um, I think we probably need to talk about another carpenter movie i feel like a carpenter movie because we talked about this have we talked we talked prince of darkness on this have we talked um the fog we have not let's talk the fog i mean that sounds great to me okay let's do the fog 
I, th- I think that's another underrated Carpenter f- movie that I don't think a lot of people talk about enough. So let's talk about The Fog next. That's it. Why, yeah, that's, why we love The Fog. That'd be great. Okay. Until next time, we're, we're out of here. here.